Um, I want to talk about TypeScript again. I know I made a video like a month ago how I said I don't like using TypeScript. And I'm going to backtrack on that video a little bit because I recently made a video. Uh, it's one of my test driven development videos. And I got stuck on a bug that took me like 10 minutes to debug. And it turned out I was calling a function and passing uh, the key incorrectly. So let me just kind of show you real quick with a little piece of code. I had a function called like, I don't know, I'll just say do stuff. And this took in an object that had calories, um, uh, writer, I think that's what it was. And it had some other objects as well. Like it had like calories reader, it had calories, and then it had something else. I don't remember, but somewhere in my code, and another file and another part of the code base, I was saying, do stuff. <clears throat> and I was saying calorie writer is equal to, I'll just say like some function. And then calories reader is equal to another function that does nothing. And then calories is like 100. All right, so you get the idea, but what happened, um, we're looking at TypeScript right now because I'm actually using TypeScript on this project that I'm working on, this little side project that hopefully I'll finish, but I probably never will. But notice how I'm calling do stuff and I'm passing the wrong object. I'm passing calorie writer instead of calories writer. And it's very easy, even for someone who's experienced, to accidentally leave off a character, especially when you're dealing with keys that have plural in them, like S. Sometimes you leave off the S or you misspell something and leave out a character. And when you're using JavaScript, if you don't triple check all your code and like be very careful what you're writing, you can run into the same bug. It doesn't even matter how much experience you have. Like if you have 10 years of experience, you're going to make this mistake because it's always the simplest mistakes that we trip up on and it eats up like half of our, you know, day or half of an hour of a day. And those hours and those minutes add up, right? So I ran into this bug and it just kind of frustrated me because it's like, dude, if I was using TypeScript from the get-go, like this would have just highlighted red. I would have added an S here, saved the file. I would have been good to go. Everything would have worked. But I, sometimes I'm stubborn and I like to argue that JavaScript is better, but I've come to my senses and I'm just going to start using TypeScript for everything. So yeah, I'm, I'm backing, backing down of what I said earlier about TypeScript is kind of illegible sometimes, but I think there's ways to use TypeScript, like the most minimal set up with TypeScript where you can allow any, like right now I'm getting errors because like I didn't put an explicit any here. I think there's ways to like set up your TS config file to like not complain about that stuff, which can help you still achieve like that rapid prototyping that JavaScript provides you, but also that extra feedback in your IDE to say like, Hey, you know, you're doing something wrong. Are you sure you want to be doing this? So. I think what I'm trying to say from now on is like, I, I'm going to use TypeScript, but I'm going to try to use the most minimal amount of TypeScript that I can use. So I get that fine balance between like the, you know, the productivity of JavaScript that I think I get, and then the extra IDE support that TypeScript can provide you. Um, and I've been using TypeScript a little bit on the side project, like I talked about, and there's like some stuff that kind of annoys me. Like right here, it's saying that like this thing could be a string. It could be null. It could be undefined. It's like, Ugh, I don't, I don't really care. Like I know it's going to be defined. So you can come through here. You can add like uh, hash bangs, all this stuff to tell TypeScript that yes, this is going to be defined. Um, but then I get like <laughs> TypeScript lint errors saying that I can't use the the hash symbol. Like, or sorry, I can't use the the exclamation mark because it's bad. So then it's like, okay, I have to like either go to ESLint and turn off that error or I need to figure out a better way to actually structure this data. So this is the type of stuff I just don't like about TypeScript. It's like, I know this is defined. I don't want to have to like see red in my terminal or see red in my editor because it, it like in this case, I'm logged in. I know I'm going to be defined. So there's ways I can work around this and like make sure that these things are defined and TypeScript knows that it's defined. But it's just extra overhead, honestly. Like I could probably turn off this, this rule or something. Maybe there is a way to turn this thing off. Uh, but maybe I shouldn't. Maybe this thing is actually useful to keep on because it's actually telling me that, there, hey, there could be a potential issue with the way I have this code written. I guess I just want to say that, like, if you are using JavaScript and you're kind of a subscriber to my channel, it's okay to use TypeScript. Like, there's nothing wrong with TypeScript. In fact, the, the more 
the, the more you learn about TypeScript and the better you get at it, the more it's going to help you, I think, in the long run to help you write more efficient code or more manageable code. Right? I will argue that typed languages will always allow you to write more maintainable code than untyped languages, especially when your team gets larger and you have like 10 or 20 developers all working on the same, same code base. I've watched people like struggle with simple typos like I showed you earlier. Um, and these typos would be easily caught with TypeScript or like you're accidentally calling the wrong property on an object when you should have called a different property. So yeah, um, I would say just you can use TypeScript. It's really not that hard. I think people get intimidated when they hear the word TypeScript, but you can use it with like the most minimal. Like you look through all here, there's no TypeScript in any of this code. Like this is a TypeScript TSX file, but there's no TypeScript here. Just JavaScript. Because it takes no arguments, right? But I mean, you can go to like other things like this input group. And there's like a little bit of TypeScript I'm using here just to kind of uh, tell TypeScript that, hey, every all the properties that need to be passed into this component need to match this thing. Like error is optional, type is optional. And just kind of following this paradigm where you just type as, as little as you can, um, I think will help you out in the long run. I'm not sure why this thing is. Let me delete that. But I'm still, honestly, I'm still learning, like, what are the best practices for TypeScript? You can kind of go all out and, like, turn on all your linting rules to make sure you're not doing anything improper. But, again, I think just doing the bare minimum just so that stuff will highlight when stuff is wrong. No duplicate props are allowed. Uh, ooh, which one do I want? I have this one, and then I have this one. So I need to go back and fix that. But, anyway, just want to have a little talk about that. I think it's important to kind of come around to my senses and kind of explain why I'm deciding to use TypeScript for now on. And if, even if you're a beginner, I definitely recommend that you try to learn TypeScript. It's, like I said, it's not that much harder to kind of set up and use. Especially if you're using Vite or like any of these, uh, these templates that kind of spin up a project for you. Like you don't have to worry about setting up TypeScript because like Vite does it all for you if you choose to use TypeScript. Um, I'm not sure if React, uh, Create React App does that for you, but Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.